My name is Anika, and I'm a backend engineer at Suki, a Bay Area startup that's building an AI assistant for doctors. I primarily work in Go. Last year, around this time, I started writing in Go and was introduced to how Go favors composition over inheritance. So in this talk, I'll describe this concept and then go over some examples in Go to understand the use cases. At the end of the talk, you will have enough information to be able to follow and appreciate this concept. Everyone knows composition is more powerful than inheritance. Go just makes this non-optional. Dave Cheney said this at one of his keynotes. We'll jump in to understand why. To introduce the topic, composition over inheritance, or the composite reuse principle, is an object-oriented programming principle that says that classes should achieve polymorphic behavior and code reuse by the composition rather than inheritance from a parent class. And implementation of composition over inheritance typically begins with the creation of various interfaces representing the behaviors that the system must exhibit. What are some of the benefits of composition over inheritance? So this is a design principle that gives the design higher flexibility. It's more natural to build the business domain classes out of various components than trying to find common things between them and creating a family tree. The initial design is simplified by identifying system object behaviors in separate interfaces instead of creating a hierarchical relationship, which we do otherwise in classes via inheritance. This approach more easily accommodates future requirements or changes that would otherwise require a complete restructuring. Additionally, it avoids problems often associated with relatively minor changes. And that's why Go uses type composition exclusively. So we'll proceed with talking about what happens in the Go programming language. We have user-defined types with structs. So the type system is an important feature of any programming language because it lets you organize your application data. In Go, structs are the way to create this user-defined concrete types. A struct here is a collection of fields or properties. And unlike other object-oriented languages, Go does not have a class keyword. Instead, we have structs, which are like a light lightweight version of classes. A struct type is exported into other packages if the name of the struct starts with a capital letter. There are no getters or setters on these struct fields, and they can access from the same package and from other packages if they start with an uppercase letter. Let's create a struct type. This is an example of a gopher struct. We can define a behavior with interface type. So interface types provide contracts to concrete types, which helps us define behavior. So we'll create an interface type for specifying the behavior for a gopher type. So here in this example, we've, we're gonna defi we've defined an interface type with the name gopher gang, in which we specify two behaviors, say hello and get info. We're going to add behavior to concrete type. So for this, we've defined an interface for implementing Gopher. Now we implement these behaviors here. In most object-oriented languages, methods are associated with class. But in Go, methods associate with a struct type. So here we've added a couple of behaviors to our Gopher type. So in conclusion, we, when we, we can try to embed the type with composition, because Go does not support inheritance, and composition is preferred over inheritance, where type embedding is the way to implement composition. And Go provides a lightweight type system that enables code reusability and promotes composition over inheritance. So now you're ready to understand this. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Uh